Frankie, where have you been? The part of traffic, sir. Boy, look at that new reception. She's a honey. You better forget about her and put your uniform on. You know how Mr. Farrell is about us being late? Yeah. Plenty of time, my boy. Plenty of time. Now, if you'll excuse me. Good morning. Oh, good morning. May I help you? Uh, yes. Would you see if there's any mail to me, please? Good morning, ABC. Oh, perhaps you'd better tell me your name first. Oh, yes, of course. Ryan. Frankie Ryan. Uh, what's yours? And Mason. No, there's nothing for you, Mr. Ryan. All right, thank you. Uh, morning. Say, you're new here, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Just started this morning. Mm-hmm. From out of town? Uh-huh. Well, which is it? Singer or an actress? Oh, singer. I've always wanted to be in radio, and this is as close as I could get. But how do you know all this? Oh, well, you see, all our employees would like to be on the air, but, well, a lot of them are pretty good, too, but, well, you see, most of them just don't get an opportunity. Singer, huh? <laughs> Say, uh, has anybody auditioned you yet? Oh, no, not yet. Well, we'll have to take care of that right away. Right away? You mean right now? <laughs> Why, sure. There's no time like the present, you know. Well, what about my job here? Oh, well, that can wait. This is important. You see, the radio field is always open to new talent. And, well, yours might be just the voice we're looking for. Oh, you're very kind, Mr. Ryan, but I don't think I'd... Oh, no, no, no. I won't take no for an answer. Come on. Come on. Uh, Stella, you watch the desk, will you? We're going to audition Miss Mason. Go what? You heard me. Audition Miss Mason. Right this way, Miss Mason. Well, uh, Mr. Frank, I can't. I got the jitters plumb down to my toes. Suppose that... Well, what's the matter, Jeff? You're doing fine. Now, come on, try it again. Are you sure this is all right, Mr. Ryan? Oh, of course it's all right, Miss Mason. Jeff is just worried because we're using this office instead of the regular audition. It makes no difference where we is. If that Mr... Jeff! Uh, are you ready, Miss Mason? Oh, yes. <laughs> Nervous? A little. Oh, well, that's only natural. We're all that way at first. All right, Jeff, go ahead. Well, good luck. Go on, Jeff. I'm not superstitious And I don't believe in wishes But I've a hunch that things will happen soon Every sign must show it That I love you And you know it It looks like another lucky pair in June By the looks of things I like the looks of things Oh, how you changed me, rearranged me By the looks of things Never thought a kiss Would make me feel like this To be specific, it's terrific Living a life of bliss What a thrill to share your love and glass Oh, how sweet romance is You're the reason my heart sings And my heart dances By the looks of things you change the looks of things So goodbye, blue world It's a new world By the looks of things Thought I only had a lustic notion But this new commotion Was a revelation of a sweet devotion By the looks of things You change the looks of things my life is pleasing, you're the reason, by the looks of things. Wow! <laughs> Ain't that something? Mr. Frankie! <laughs> say, you have got a voice. That was great. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Liked it? Why, say, with a voice like that, you've got no business behind a reception desk. I can see you now, a star, your name. We all gonna be seeing stars if we don't get out of here. That Mr. Farrell. Oh, I boy. thought I'd find you here. Up to your old tricks again, huh? Well, this ain't my idea. I know whose idea it is. Uh, oh, Mr. Farrell, this is Miss Mason. She's got a wonderful voice, the greatest you've ever heard. Well, how do you do, Mr. Farrell? How do you do? And don't try to evade the issue. Why aren't you in uniform? And why aren't you at work? You took the words right out of my mouth. Well, we didn't mean any harm, Mr. Farrell. That's not the point. One more shenanigan like this, and you're going to find yourself out of a job. Yes, sir. Now get busy. See if you can find Miss Wilson. She's holding up the rehearsal. Yes, sir, right away. 
I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Farrell. I, I didn't know. It wasn't your fault. I know that. Well, then I won't lose my job. Of course not. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Farrell. Not at all. Mr. Farrell will call you, and he wishes to see you. Yes, Mr. Hastings. Say, Ann, have Rita Wilson report to Mr. Hastings as soon as she comes in. All right. Miss Wilson, please. Oh, Paige. Paige, front, please. Oh, Paige, when Miss Wilson comes in, have her see Mr. Hastings at once. It's important. Look, Ann, will you forget about That'll your... That'll be all, Paige. That's nice work, honey. You sure put him in his place. Well, he needed a lesson. But he is kind of cute. Miss Wilson, if you please, this one. This one. Excuse me, Miss Wilson. What is it? Uh, Mr. Hastings would like to see you in his office right away. It's all for today. Some other time. And uh, Mr. Farrell is waiting for you in Studio A. Tell Mr. Farrell I'll see him as soon as I talk to Mr. Hastings. Yes, ma'am. But you must be sensible, Rita. I am being sensible, B.J., just the way I like to be. Sure, sensible. and at my expense. Now, you listen to me, Rita. You listen to me, Sam Quigley. I've been pushed around by you two long enough. Either I get my way or I quit. That's final. But you can't do that. Oh, can't I? Well, you just want Now, me. now, let's be calm. Let's not lose our heads about this thing. I'm surprised at you, B.J., getting her all upset like this. Well, when she told me... Now, now, I'll take over from here. Now, Rita, why can't you be a good girl? I am a good girl. Well, you know what I mean. Give up this silly idea of leaving us for the Denglow people. Haven't we made you happy here? No. We gave you a raise in salary, didn't we? No, what? So, we pay you as much as any sponsor can afford. What do we have to do to please you? Why, hasn't Mr. Hastings told you? Told me what? What is this, B.J.? Well, you won't like it, Sam. She wants her salary double. She... Double. And that's only the beginning. Look, Sam, she wants the right to choose her own producer, announce a comic Stop, book. Stop, that's for... enough. It's enough. Are you out of your mind? Nobody's worth that money. The Denticlo people think I am. You mean they agreed to that? All I have to do is put my name on the dotted line. No, Rita, you can't do this to me. I can't afford it. Well, you better do it, Sam. You'll be the laughing stock of radio if she signs with some other toothpaste account. You don't have to tell me that. I know it. Think it over, Sammy boy. And don't keep me waiting too long, or I might lose my patience and sign with Denticlo anyhow. And you said you'd bring her into line. Why didn't you do it? After all, it's your program. Yes, and costing me 15000 a week. And for what? It's got the best rating of any show on the air. And you still got Rita. Oh, Rita, who cares about Rita? There are plenty of singers as good as her. You can buy them for a dime a dozen. The woods are full of them. But she's got the name. Yeah, and the glamour. <laughs> Not for me, she hasn't. But she has for 20 million radio listeners. And if you think I'm going to let a rival toothpaste manufacturer cash in on it, you're crazy. All right, all right, Sam. I'll take care of it. Now, don't worry. I don't intend to. How's that blue moonlight number for time, Mr. Farrell? I don't know, Dick. Mr. Farrell, I'm not getting enough strings. Oh, all right. Uh, Dick, have the brass hold down a little bit. The fiddles are in the mud. Hey, when do we start? Just a minute, Ted. And incidentally, while you're on your feet, how about digging up some new gags for that script of yours? What, go back on Joe Miller after all these years? Uh, Not a chance. Look, if those gags are good enough for my grandfather, they're good enough for me. What's the idea of rehearsing the show without me? What we're doing doesn't concern you, Rita. Doesn't concern me. I like that. The whole show is built around me. That's how little I'm concerned. Would you mind stepping outside with me a minute, Rita? I want to rehearse your lines with you privately. What's the matter with you and the prima donna, Martin? I thought you two were pretty chummy. Oh, forget it. Huh? She looked through you like you weren't even there. I said forget it. Okay. Oh, hi, fellas. Say, listen, I got a great new gag for you for the Pearly Dance Show. Okay, shoot. All right, look. One fella says to the other, he says, you're so dumb, I bet you don't know what kind of skin shoes are made of. Now, get this. The other guy says, no, but banana skins would make good slippers. <laughs> All right? Huh? All right, you can't rule me off for trying. Paige. Mr. Farrell wants to see you in Studio A, Paige. Oh, look, Ann, can't you lay off of that? I was only trying to help you. Yes, you almost oh, helped me out of a job. Well, look, I can explain everything. They'll only have lunch with me. 
Well, I'd sure. I'll tell him right away. On your horse, Frankie. Yeah, okay. Well, well how about it, Ian? Well, I'll think it over. Boss, well, look. Meet me at Studio A as soon as you're on. Hey! Boss, we got a terrific gag for you. This will mighty you. Don't tell me it's a gag. Rita Wilson breaks her leg and has to be shot. No gag could be that good. Now, get this. You're so dumb, I bet you don't know what kind of skin shoes is made out of. No, but banana skins would make pretty good slippers. <laughs> is that a war? Just a gag for the snapper. <laughs> uh, hey, mister. Uh, you can't go in there. Why? I'm not going to hurt nothing. I uh, know, but that's a rehearsal. And ain't nobody loud in there but people in the show. Well, maybe I'm on the show. I know you're in the show. I know everybody that's in that show. You can't go in there. You can't. Listen, Banjo Eyes, I'm going through that door but and Mr. You... Franker, tell this gentleman he can't go in there. Wait a minute, cowboy. What seems to be the trouble? <laughs> well, I ain't aiming to horn in on nothing, buddy. I'm from Ogallala. Kind of a stranger around these parts. I ain't never seen a big broadcast before. Oh, well, this is not a broadcast. It's just a rehearsal. Oh, that don't make no difference. As long as I can see some of them big stars at work. You reckon I could kind of go in there and watch? Well, I reckon maybe you can. But look, you got to sit in the back and be quiet. I won't make a sound. All right, come on. Hey, Jeff, you come on with us, too. Oh, uh, Mr. Frankie, why me? Well, I want to show you how easy it is not to be afraid of a microphone. Oh, Mr. Frankie, it ain't easy for me not to be scared of nothing. You know that. <laughs> come on. All right, I'll go. Now, listen, go right up there and sit down and don't make any noise. Hey, has anybody seen Mr. Farrell? He sent for me. He's out on the roof. Tell him to hustle it up, will you? We gotta tie him to Wilson's spot. Right away. There's no argument. I simply want the script changed. That's impossible, and you know it. We can't rewrite the script at the last minute like this simply because you don't happen to like the comic. I can't stand that man. It's impossible for me to sing under such circumstances. Now, look, Rita. As a producer of this show, my reputation is at stake, and you're not going to ruin it. You'll sing all right, and you'll like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you want? Well, uh, Mr. Martin is ready to tie Miss Wilson's song. Okay. All right, Bob. I'll sing. But you won't like it. So, Frankie, stick around till after the rehearsal. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Places, everybody. What are you waiting, Bob? I'm going to pick it up on page 10. The tag on the Wallace routine. I've made some changes. And well, that'll be an improvement. Quiet, everybody. We're timing this. What's the idea of running around with your shorts on wrong side out? It didn't take you very long to get here. My feet got hot, so I turned the hose on them. And so old. Oh, I get it. Sparrow, huh? Don't be silly. Uh, uh, you're so dumb, I'll bet you don't even know what kind of skin shoes are made out of. No, but banana skins would make pretty good slippers. <laughs> My gang. <laughs> Stop the music. What's the matter with you, Rita? Can't they wait until I'm ready? Oh. Well, are you ready now, Miss Wilson? Yes. All right, start it again. <laughs> And playing the conga. Couples are swaying there in the spell of a day. Conga. Now you can learn to do the conga. That Latin rhythm everyone seems to know. No matter where you may go, they do the conga. Rhythm. You join the chain and follow rhythm. And to the jungle camp where you move your feet, you find that you're in the beat doing the conga. Then with the chain, you remain until they form the archway. And with your favorite partner, you crawl through the archway and then play the conga. You may be lucky with the conga. Get the coroner. This girl's dead. Dead? 
Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Coroner's on his way up, Marty. What do you make of it? Whoever shot her knew his business, that's a cinch. Plug straight through the heart. No powder burns. Now that gun was fired out there someplace. Lights out, too. That's fancy shooting. Yeah, too fancy. All right, boys, I won't need you. You can beat it. Are you sure nobody left this studio while the lights were out? Why, yes. Or after they came back on? You can see for yourself. We're all here. I don't see anything. Who's we? Why, uh... That's right, Lieutenant. Nobody can get out of here even if they wanted to. No, why not? Well, you see, the doors lock automatically from inside the control booth. That's for rehearsing and broadcast, too. It keeps out anybody... Right now, I'm only interested in who they keep in. Is he telling the truth? What do you mean, am I telling the truth? I'm asking him. All right. He's right. Well, in that case, the murderer is still in this room. Oh, that's preposterous. These are radio people broadcasting is sacred to them. Well, they wouldn't of think... Of course that... they wouldn't. I'm stupid not to have realized that. It was suicide. When nobody was looking, she tiptoed over and switched out the lights. Shot herself, swallowed the gun, and then trotted right back there to die. That's not what I meant. Well, if Rita Wilson didn't swallow the gun, who did? Just hold your horses, Sprout. I'm coming to that. Delaney, find that gun. It's around here somewhere. Okay. Ten to one, you don't find it. No? Tell me. Why not? Well, because I've looked the place over from top to bottom before you got here. And, of course, you searched everybody, too. Well, no, I, I guess I forgot that, but... Holy smoke, the cowboy! What cowboy? Tex, the singing cowboy. He might carry a gun. Hey, hey Lieutenant, he, he's gone. Oh, he won't get far. Wait here, Delaney. Come on, Jeff. Excuse me, y'all, please. Uh, wait a minute. If he used the elevator, we'll take the stairway and cut him off. Okay, let's go. Is this a routine? Yeah, you should write a funnier one. Hey, Farrell. Quote. If you were a smart producer, you'd hook this up and shoot it out over the air. The top any program come out of this madhouse yet. Unquote. You must have been out of your mind. Well, what do you mean? You know what I mean. But I didn't. You keep your voice down. You're safe. Hey, miss. Did the cowboy just leave here? Why, yes. Take Barton. He just walked out. Done that, mister. You're liable to hurt somebody doing that. Where do you think you're going? Back to the hotel, I reckon. Oh, you was, eh? I'm sure, I didn't figure that killing was any of my business. Brother, you don't know how much that killing is your business. There's nothing on him, Marty. There's nothing here, boss. All right, what did you do with it? Do with what? You know, the gun, the one you killed Rita Wilson with. Oh, you got me all wrong. I don't pack no gun. Them things are dangerous. Supposing somebody got killed. Somebody did get killed. Well, see what I mean? ABC regrets to announce that the Perlident program, usually on the air at this time, will not be heard tonight. An unfortunate incident this afternoon took the life of Miss Rita Wilson, known to millions as the Perlident girl. Miss Wilson was shot down by an unknown assailant during a studio rehearsal.
fine, Jeff, but we can't use that on the radio. No? No, you see, we have to have... Oh, hello, Mr. Farrell. Oh, I was afraid you'd gone home. No, that cop Marty held everybody up. You want to see me? Yes, I, I'd like to talk to you, Frankie. Oh. Oh, I get it. I'm, I'm fired, huh? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Farrell. I'll see you all later, if you don't mind. No, on the contrary, I, I came to ask a favor of you, if you don't mind. Oh, sure, go ahead, shoot. Well, uh, you overheard Miss Wilson and me having a bit of an argument this afternoon before the... Uh... That's right. Well, it, uh, it didn't really mean anything, Frankie. As a matter of fact, there was nothing to it, but... Well, you can understand how, how such a thing might look if taken in the wrong light. Yeah, sure, I understand. You, you mean it might get you in a mess, huh? Yes, uh, there'd be a lot of embarrassing questions, and... Well, you realize that my reputation as a producer, I couldn't afford to. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. You mean you want me to keep my mouth shut? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's all right with me. Doesn't mean anything to me. I knew you'd see it the right way. Thanks a million, Frankie. Yeah. I won't forget it. Oh, Mr. Farrell. Yes. Say, uh, who are you going to get to uh, fill Rita Wilson's spot? Well, I, I hadn't thought about it. A little early for that, don't you think? Yeah, but, uh, look, when you do think about it, will you keep Ann Mason in mind? She's got a wonderful voice. Certainly. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, ask her to come and see me. We'll talk about it. Right. Good night. Good night, Mr. So sure glad you didn't come out first. See, what that Mr. Fowl man want? Is you in trouble again? No, no. He just invited me over to his house for a game of checkers. Checkers? Checkers? Now, ain't that something. Mr. Frankie, one of these days, you're going to try me too far. Well, look, pull yourself together, will you? we got a lot of work to do. I want to go over this new routine of ours. Uh, Mr. Frankie, between me waking here in the studio all day and running around all night hitting you, well, I ain't getting no sleep. Well, a growing boy like you doesn't need any. I know, but just going wears me to a frazzle. Look, you got your script? Oh, I got that right here. Okay, I got to get something for a mic. Mike, does you have to? Are you still scared of a microphone? Every time I see one of them things, I get the jitters all inside of myself. Well, look, we got to break you that. Now, look at that microphone. That ain't no microphone. That's a mouth. I know, I know. But look, can't you pretend it's a mic? Now, go on, look at it. Now, you still scared? Oh, Mr. Franker, how do you expect for me to be afraid of something that's closer to me than my own brother? Yeah, I never thought of that. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Uh-oh. I don't like the looks in your eyes when you say you got an idea. That means trouble. I got just the thing. Uh-oh. Whatever it is, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it, Mr. Franker. No, sir, I ain't gonna do it. Because right there is why Miss Wilson got killed. Quiet down, will you, Jeff? What do you want to do, wake the dead? Wake the dead? Mr. Frank, ain't I got enough on my mind without you putting ideas in my head? Jeff, do you mean to tell me you're actually afraid of Rita Wilson's ghost? It ain't the ghost. It's the person that made her ghost. That's what's bothering me. Boy, you're terrific. Come on, let's rehearse this thing. We want to get out of here sometime tonight. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Frank, uh, I've been thinking. Uh-oh. I don't think I want to be... Now, wait a minute, Jeff. There's nothing the matter with you. You're just afraid of that microphone, that's all. That ain't all. Well, what's word? Well, now, look. You want to be a success, don't you? You don't want to be a janitor all your life. Well, at least I get paid for being a janitor. Well, sure you get paid. Yeah, but look, if you're on the radio, think of the glamour. The people well, clamoring now, for you. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Frank. That lady, Miss Wilson, had glamour. Look at her now. Mm -mm, that wake is too dangerous. You tell me something, will you, Jeff? What would you do if you didn't have anything to be scared of? Well, I would... Never do. mind. Look, let's rehearse this thing. We want to go home sometime tonight. Well, if I got I just got to do it. Well, then start reading, will you? Oh, uh, Mr. Frank, it's your first line. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, you ready? No, I'm ready. Morning, Ralph. How you feel? Uh, morning, Mose. Uh, I'm sick. Sick? Boy, you is always uh, complaining Mr. Frankie, about... Uh, you don't expect me to speak in no dialect, do you? No, no, you read your just plain. You're the straight man. Oh, <laughs> and that's different. Come on, now, let's start again. Morning, Ralph. How you feel? Uh, morning, Mose. Uh, I'm I, I sick. Sick? Boy, you is always uh, complaining about... Mr. Frank, uh, it's a little hot in here. Uh, uh, let's go outside, huh? Yeah, it is kind of warm. No, but wait a minute. I'll fix the ventilator. Oh. No wonder it won't work. Hey, Jeff, come here, quick. Yes, sir. Look in here. Mm. Is that a gun? Yeah. Must be the one that killed Rita Wilson. Pretty smart, huh? 
probably put in there while the lights were out. Uh, a gun and me ain't got no business in the same room. I'll see you. Uh-oh. Hey, Jeff, wait a minute. Hold the phone. What are you two doing in here? Well, we were just... Uh... What's that? It's the gun you've been looking for. Oh, trying to hide it, eh? Oh, now, wait a minute. You certainly live up to your reputation as a cop, don't you? You suspect everybody. It's my business suspecting people. Where did you find it? Come on over here and I'll show you. Right there in that ventilator. Must have been put there after the murder. Oh, no wonder we couldn't find it. How do we know you didn't put it there? Yeah, how do we know you didn't sneak back here tonight and try to grab it off when you thought nobody was around? Mm-hmm. We caught you right in the act, didn't we? Oh, now, wait a minute. Settle down. Where do you get that stuff? The good thing you used your head and picked this gun up with your handkerchief. Because if your fingerprints are on it... Yeah, well, what if they are? Now, wait a minute now. Where, where are y'all going to take us? Police headquarters. What for? We didn't do nothing. Go. Yep, there wasn't your fingerprints. Well, don't have to look so disappointed about it. Uh, Mr. Lieutenant, do that mean that we are free again? Did we ain't murder? Well, to an extent, yes. But don't leave town. No, sir. Well, what makes you think we'd want to leave town? Well, you've nosed out all the other answers. Try dipping your beak into that one. Now, listen, Marty. Don't call all me. All right, all right. Lieutenant. Aging Mr. Waters. Mr. Waters in Studio B, please. Oh, hello, Tech. Hiya. Aging Mr. Waters. Well, good morning, Tech. Aging Mr. Morning, Miss Ann. Mr. Waters. Oh, you look happy. Get some good news? I sure did. Mr. Farrell's going to let me audition for him this morning. Oh, Tech, that's wonderful. It's about time you had a chance. You've waited long enough. Well, we both have, Miss Ann. Maybe you'll be next. Oh, I hope so. Well, good luck, Tech. Oh, thank you. Well, that cowboy don't waste any time, does he? What do you mean? Well, he's always hanging around you, always talking to you. What's he want, anyhow? I think that's none of your business. Oh, well, pardon me. But if you must know, he was telling me about his audition. Audition? For who, Farrell? Yes, Paige. Mr. Farrell is going to hear him this morning. Oh, Mr. Farrell, is it? Well, I guess that puts me in my place. Well, you asked for it. Yeah. Paging Mr. Waters. You mail for us, beautiful? Oh, I see. Oh, hello, Mr. Pringle. Listen, I got another great gag for you. Stow it, kid. We ain't buying gags anymore. We're off the air. Off the air? Yeah, Wallace quit this morning. But he couldn't. He... Ah, but he did. And now we're on relief. Ain't that cute? Gee, I'm sorry. But look. What's your job, kid? We might start angling for it. No mail, Mr. Pringle. Thanks. So long. Good luck. Hey, Ann. Did you hear that? Well, what about it? What about it? That means they need a new comic for the Pearly Dent show, doesn't it? Yes. Well? Well, what? Frankie, not you. Well, who else? Why not? Look, Jeff and I have got a swell comedy act worked up. Does Mr. Farrell know about this? Oh, well, no, but... Well, don't you worry. It's in the bag. Well, just make sure you don't wind up in the bag. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. Say, so is he kidding? Oh, bury me not on the lone prairie these words came low nice cheerful little ditty yeah now i know why they call them lone cowboys or not plenty boy who lay on his dying bed at the close of day that'll do mr barton thank you very much well i'm not through yet i got a lot more well, to do. Heard all that we required. We'll let you know if we can use you. How much more of this torture? One more coming up. Presenting the two blackbirds, Rastus and Moe. Hey, what goes on here? Morning, Rastus. How's you all? 
morning more. Uh, I'm sick. Boy, you is always complaining about something that you ain't even got and couldn't have it if you did have it. Boy, I got it. You got what? A kind of a feeling the stars... I had that once. You mean the kind of a feeling the stars in the head and works around it? That's it. it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What you doing for it? Well, I've seen myself a doctor. And he give me a bottle of... Don't take them, they'll kill you. Now, why don't you try... I tried two boxes of them. They didn't do me no good. Then why don't you go see Dr... That quack? I had him. You see, he's one of these kind of doctors. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Well, look, in that case, what you need is a a cutting doctor. You know, a sturgeon, a man who can go rock weight on you. You know, one that takes a knife and he cuts your hair. I had mine taken out last year. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, look, what else do you think maybe could be wrong with you? Well, you you see, I thought maybe it was... uh... Oh, no, 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 no. You're all wrong. Couldn't be that. Mm -hmm. Now, look, why don't you try some of them pills, you know, that my brother took when he was suffering from what he caught when he was... Was he out there? I thought all the time he was going to go. Yeah, he did, but he done come back. What's he doing now? Well, uh, you see, he's working again. Where? Well, he's got a job, and boy, he do you know he's making a salary? Or... That ain't no money at all. Yeah, I know, and that poor devil, he's fixing to get mad. Uh, 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 look here, uh, Mr. Franklin, you got to talk slow if you want me to keep up with you. I can't talk that fast, Mr. Franklin. Uh... Who is he going to marry? Well, don't you know he's going to marry the daughter of... Uh, she's a nice girl. Mm-hmm. All right, break it up, you two. Well, what's the matter, boss? I thought we were doing pretty fine. You know better than to try a stunt like this. Well, now, just a minute, Mr. Fell. You think we I just... wouldn't recognize you behind this stuff? Don't touch me. I don't rub off. Oh, Frankie, this is taking things a little too far. After all, I agreed to one audition, but not... Yeah, but Mr. Fe... I mean, Mr. Farrell, we knew you needed two new comics for the Pearly Dance show, so we just thought that... Uh-oh. Here come that man again. Sorry to bust in like this. Well, not at all. Were you... Were you looking for me? Tex Barton. They told me he was here. Well, uh, he just left here, Lieutenant. Who's he? Who's who? You. <laughs> Frankie, don't you remember? <laughs> what happened to you? Fall in a coal bin? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I did. Uh, you should have passed him in the hall. He must be in the building somewhere. Thanks. Hey, Lieutenant, wait a minute. Hey, Marty. My name's Lieutenant Phillips. Don't forget that. Yeah, okay. What did you want with Tex Barton? Were those his fingerprints on the gun? Don't know yet, but it was his gun. We got a wire back on the serial number. Well, well, then he's the killer. Well, you can't tell. He did time back in Cheyenne. He used the same gun in a shooting scrape over some woman. What's her name, Delaney? Oh, Wharton. Gladys Wharton. Yeah, that's it. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Marty. Uh, I, I mean, uh, Lieutenant. Come on, Delaney. Wharton. Gladys Wharton. Oh, Jeff, have you seen Frankie? Yes, there he is. <laughs> that? Yes, and it's not funny. <laughs> Here, Frankie, take these contracts over to Mr. Hastings' office and wait for an okay. Right. Come on, Jeff. Say, now's a good time to sell our act to Mr. Hastings. Yeah, but we've already been vetoed once by Mr. Farrell. Oh, quit beefing. Come on. Wonder what this is all about. I don't know, but this ain't no place for me. Come here. Pull yourself together. Something's all wrong. Where's Mr. Hastings? Don't look at me. I ain't got him. Come on, Jeff, let's take a look around. Tex Barton! Jeff, he's dead. I'm glad you left that door open. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. Death once again stalked the halls of Amalgamated Broadcasting Company today, striking down Tex Barton, cowboy troubadour. Detective Lieutenant Marty Phillips, in charge of the investigation, believes the crime to be the work of the mysterious assailant who, less than 24 hours before, took the life of Rita Wilson, beautiful ABC singing star. What bothers me is why, in an institution of this size, nobody heard the shot when the gun was fired. Oh, that's easy, Lieutenant. Yeah, with you, everything is easy. 
Well, you see, all these rooms are soundproof. Well, that could account for it. Which reminds me, how does it happen you're always on deck every time a murder's committed around here? Well, uh, coincidence, I guess. Yeah? Well, men have been convicted and hung on the strength of coincidence. Don't forget that. And you say you two were auditioning at the time of the murder? Yes. That's right. And you claim you were in his office across the street when it happened. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I was. That's right. We were looking over some contracts. I can prove it. That leaves you, Miss Mason. Oh, well, I'm I know, about. I know. You were listening to the Swing Parade broadcast. But and I... you can prove it. Where were you? Uh, I, uh, I was in the coincident with Mr. Frankie. Well, if this ain't as neat a set of alibis as I've ever heard. Well, it'll be off, and now you can go. But don't anybody leave this building without checking with me first. And don't try anything funny. And that goes double for you. Yes, sir. Oh, Frankie. Look, you, you won't say anything about this. Oh, no, don't worry about that. Oh, fine. But listen, don't you forget Ann's audition. Oh, that's right. I'll tell you what, you, you have her in the audition room in half an hour, and I'll hear her then. That's a step. Somehow or other, although you're gone, the love you brought to me will linger on. Somehow or other, someday, sweetheart. Mmm, not bad. Honey, you can sing for me any time. Quickly doesn't sign you up, he's crazy. Crazy, am I? <laughs> like a fox. That girl's great. I'm going to sign her up. Oh, but Sam, she's a green kid. She's had no experience. Well, that's what I like about her. Get her in here. Okay. Oh, gee, Ann, that was marvelous. You were great. Oh. You sure was, Miss Ann. You sing that like nobody's business. Oh, I hope so. Do you think Mr. Farrell will like it? Well, how can he help but like it? Well, Ann, you're in. Made it. Really? Yes, Mr. Hastings just called. What'd I tell you? He and Mr. Quigley would like to see you in the client's room right away. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? Hey, hey where do you think you're going? Well, with Ann. Well, well, why? I'm her agent. She's the greatest discovery I've ever had. Yes, I know, Frankie, but uh, under the circumstances, don't you think you'd better let me handle it? Oh, but gee, I, Mr. Uh, Farrell. Think maybe he's right, Frankie. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, okay. Good luck. Well, I guess we got the brush off. How do you like that? How do you like that? Uh, but, Mr. Frankie, wait. How do you like that? I arrange for the whole audition. I get her all set. What happens to me? Yeah, I'm a smart guy. I wind up behind the eight ball. Is you talking about me? No. Jeff, I'm through with women. Absolutely through with them. Especially singers. That's the best idea you had yet. Because singers don't last long on this network. No, sir. You said it. But you know, Jeff, gee, I'd hate to see anything happen to Ann. I mean, like... Well, uh, like what happened to Miss Wilson and Mr. Tex? Yeah. You know, somebody has to catch those killers. Looks like it's gonna have to be us. Yeah, not so heavy on that us. You gonna find them killers. Them killers ain't found me, and I ain't gonna give them no help by finding them first. Shit! I got it! We've got a date. i got a date right here with a broom, and I'm going to keep it. No, you haven't. Go on, change your clothes. Does I have to? Go on and change your clothes. Am I going to have trouble with you? 
Change in clothes. Hey, Stella, have those cops left yet? Well, I haven't seen them, Frankie. Uh -huh. Look, have you got Tex Barton's home address there? Sure. Give it to me, will you? Well, now, look, Frankie, this isn't another one of your brainstorms. Never mind that. This is important. Well, it's room 203 at the Walsh Hotel. Swell. Thanks a lot. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Tex killed in Mr. Hastings' office. It just don't make sense. Don't none of it make no sense to me. Well, if Tex did kill Rita, who killed Tex and why? Why ask me a riddle, Mr. Frankie? Why should I know? Well, I was just thinking out loud. Uh-oh. So you don't suppose Mr. Hastings could have killed Tex or Rita, do you? I don't think so, because Mr. Hastings is an awful nice man. Yeah, that's the way I had it figured, but I don't know. The finger seems to point to him. Uh, Mr. Frankie, if you don't be careful, the finger's going to be pointing at you, and... If I could only get my hands on one good clue. Like what, for instance? I don't like getting a line on that girl that Tex was mixed up with in Cheyenne. What was her name? Gladys Wharton? I don't know the lady. Well, I'd like to. I think she's the answer to the whole shooting match. That's one answer I don't want to know. Well, if my hunch is right, we're about to find out. Here it is, here. If you ask me, we is it. There's nobody in. How can you expect for Mr. Tex to be home if he's dead? I wasn't thinking of Tex, stupid. Did it ever occur to you that somebody else might have the same idea? Well, if anybody else ain't got it, the idea must not be no good. I'm going... Now, wait a minute. This is the break I've been waiting for. We're going in. Ain't that trespassing? And besides, ain't the door locked? Yeah, but the skeleton key is the answer to that. You always got the answer to everything. Come on. Uh, Mr. Frankie, you got me in here. Now, what is I'm going to do? Now, look, get busy. If I know Marty Phillips, he won't be long in finding this place himself. You examine the bed. I'm going to look through the drawers. Yes, sir. Never can tell what you find. Might be something big. Look a year, look a year. Look. Takes a suitcase. Boy, let me at it. Oh, them ain't nothing but papers. What'd you expect to find? A dead body? Well, wouldn't nothing surprise me here lately the way we've been going. I done got so I'm scared to open my dinner bucket anymore. Say, listen, if these papers are what I think they are, it's better than finding gold. Mr. Frank, you sure got a plenty of sense of value. Look at me in. Now, ain't that something? Ann's picture. Then my eyes didn't fool me after all. Mm -hmm, look at that. There's a telegram, too. I can't believe it. Yet they, they tie up the picture, the telegram. She must be Gladys Wharton. Well, you don't mean to say that she killed that cowboy, do you? Oh, Jeff, I don't know what to think. Mm, looks bad. Yeah. Look, don't you say anything to anybody. Not even Ann. Oh, you know me. You know, if she did... Well, if she did, she must have had a good reason. You know, Jeff, we got to help her. Yes, sir. Greetings, kiddies. I know it was going to happen. I know it. I suppose this is a coincidence, too. Well, no, not exactly. You see, uh, we kind of like Tex, so uh, we thought we'd come up in his room, you know, and gather up the things and, well, send them home. Sure, I know. A very noble gesture. You wanted to help him so much, you tore his room apart doing it. It's robbery, all right, Marty. No doubt about it. It's as plain as the nose on your face. Uh, but, uh, marvelous, Delaney. Sometimes I wonder what I'd do without you around to tell me these things. Yes, sir. All right, kids, spill it. What did you find? We didn't find anything. I just thought that... Well, suppose you start thinking of a nice, cozy room behind bars. Because that's where you're going to wind up if you don't start talking fast. Well, what makes you think we found anything? Oh, that look on your face, like the cat that ate the canary. You ain't kidding nobody. Okay. You win, Marty. And my name's Lieutenant Phillips, not Marty. For holding back evidence, eh? And Mason. And a telegram from Gladys Wharton. Very interesting. You wouldn't be trying to protect your little girlfriend, now, would you? Well, uh, uh, no. Uh, that's my picture. She gave it to me. Get away. This belongs to the state now. In the case of the people versus Gladys Wharton. What do you mean? You're gonna... I mean, for my money, Ann Mason murdered Tex Barton. Bring him along, Delaney. Hey, wait a minute. You know, Jeff and I didn't look this place over very good. Aren't you going to look around and see if we overlooked anything? 
Yeah. I think you got something there. They locked us in. Break it open. Open this door. Never mind that. Listen, I gotta talk to you right away. Come on out on the roof. Go on, Jeff. Well, what's the matter, Frankie? What's wrong? Everything's wrong. Marty's wise to the whole shebang. Wise to what? I don't understand. That picture and the telegram. He found them. What picture? What telegram? Oh, you know, Ann, the picture you gave Tex Barton. Oh, that. Oh, that. Listen, you're on a spot. Oh, don't be silly. I knew Tex before. He'd worked with some of the smaller radio stations. And when he heard I was out of a job, why, well, he took my picture around. Well, look, that's all right with me, but you're gonna have a hard time making Marty believe it. Don't you realize he thinks you killed Tex? And he's coming up here to make an arrest right now. Well, that's awful. Well, I can't believe it. Well, you better believe it because he's not fooling. He sure ain't, Miss Ann. But my contract, I just signed Look, it. Forget about your contract. The best thing for you to do is to get out of here as quick as you can. Find a place to hide. And, and I know just the place. The county jail. You're under arrest, Miss Mason. Or should I say what? And I'm taking you along with her. Me? What for? For locking me in that room. Okay, Marty, we'll go with you. But you're sure going to look like a chump when the papers tell how we made a monkey out of you. Come on. Don't worry, Ann. We'll do everything we can for you. Now, there's a guy that's a credit to the police force. It ain't fair, Mr. Frankie. Here it is way past my dinner time, and I'm starving to death, and there you is reading a book. All right, be quiet, will you? I'll be through in a minute. That's what I've been telling my stomach, but it keeps on arguing. Here's one, look. Robert Farrell, radio producer, formerly in New York. Well, no Cheyenne, he's out. No, he ain't. I've just seen him come in. Look, look at this one. B.J. Hastings, radio executive, formerly owner of WRW in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Jeff, that's it. We've got it. You mean Mr. Histon is the killer? Well, he could be, but, gee, it's hard to believe. I... Look, if Ann knew him in Cheyenne, then she's in on the whole deal. Now, if we can only talk to her and find My out... My goodness, she is the killer. No, Ann couldn't kill anybody. No? She... Well, she's not the type. Come on. Where are we going? To see Ann. Down to the jailhouse? Well, certainly. Oh, Mr. Frank, this is one summer that I thought I was going to get some fresh air. You'll get plenty of it. Come on. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Goodbye. Hiya, Marty. How many times have I got to tell you my name is Lieutenant Phillips? And if you're looking for any clues, I ain't got any. <laughs> you're telling me. I told you. I'm sorry, Marty. They slipped past me. It's all right, Delaney. All right, kid. Get it off your chest. Well, it's nothing. I uh, just wanted to see Ann. What makes you think I'd let you see it? Well, as a taxpayer, it's my privilege. Well, of course. Hey, wait a minute. You don't pay taxes. Well, I, I will someday. So couldn't I see her now on account? Delaney. Wait a minute. You can't throw me out. I got a right to see Ann. Well, she ain't here. She ain't here? We released her on bail a half an hour ago. You released her on bail? We released her on bail. Who did it? Who did it, Marty? Who got her out? Even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. You mean you don't know? Oh, the deal was handled by Max Krieger, a bail broker. Wouldn't give his client's name. He wouldn't, huh? Marty, do you realize what this means? It means I've got too much on my mind right now to worry about it. Now, will you please... But look, now, Ann didn't kill Tex. And if she is Gladys Wharton, she knows too much. So the killer gets her out of jail so he can murder her. Maybe he's got something there, Marty. Yeah, I know. Say, if that's straight, that girl's life means less with every tick of the clock. we got to find her. Listen, there's a chance she might have gone to the studio. She's supposed to be on the permit then now. Well, it's a long one, but we'll try it. Say, Marty... You know, I've been thinking. Uh-oh. Well, stop it. Every time you start to think, I get a headache. You get a headache. Every time he starts to thinking, I get a nervous concussion. Quiet down, Jeff. Look, Marty. You know, I don't think Ann is Gladys Wharton. No? Then who is? Well, how about Rita Wilson? No, you're crazy. We looked up Ann Mason's record. She hails from a little town about 50 miles outside of Cheyenne. Yeah? I didn't know that. Oh, nice of you to admit it. 
Say, look, did you know that Mr. Hastings comes from down there, too? Where did you find that out? Well, I looked it up in the radio yearbook. He used to own a station down there. Then maybe he's the one we're looking for. I don't know who we're looking for. This case gets more mixed up every time I blink my eyes. How about it, Marty? How about what? How about Mr. Hastings? How about shutting up so I can think? Step on it, Delaney. Right. Excuse me, miss, I, uh... Stella, have you seen Anne? Why, yes, she came in a minute ago with Mr. Farrell. Farrell? Mm -hmm. That's all I want to know. Farrell, I want to talk to you. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. You still on the job? What have you done with Anne? Well, I haven't seen her. The girl at the desk said you came in with her a while ago. Well, she must be confused. I think you're the one that's confused, mister. Now, are you going to tell us where she is? Well, I... Well, yes, I, I did come in with her, but I don't know where she is now. That's a fact. It better be. It is. And now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, the pearly then show goes on in half an hour, and I... Oh, no, you don't. You're staying right here with me. Well, look, what about Mr. Hastings? Will you get that idea out of your head? No, I'm getting to the bottom of this thing once and for all. Delaney, round up everybody and have them in the client's room in 15 minutes. And that goes for you, too. Yes, sir. Jeff! Uh-oh. What's been the matter with me? That's just what I've been trying to figure out. The teletype. I should have thought of that a long time ago. Well, here's hoping it works. Here's hoping we don't get caught. Through. You don't say so. Mr. Frankie, you sure is a genius. Yeah, Jeff. Tex used to do a singing act with a blonde girl named Gladys Wharton. Jeff, it's beginning to click. Rita Wilson used to be a blonde. What do you know about that? Says they both left town hurriedly after a shooting scrape with some radio executive. Now, who was the radio executive? gone dead. And just when we were going to find out something important. You don't think a ghost did that, do you? No. That machine went off too conveniently. Say, this one's connected with the machine in the newsroom, isn't it? I wonder. You wait here, Jeff. Alone? With all these ghosts? Mr. Frank! Boom, I get it. 
I knew it was going to happen to me, Mr. Frankie. I knew it. It's gone, all right. Delaney! He must have come in here from the newsroom and grabbed that tape and then went out the other yeah. way. Did anybody enter or leave this room? Nobody but you, the kid, and the porter there. Thanks. Must have used this door. Where does it lead to? Well, to a hall that leads to the sponsor's room. Well, let's go. Uh, Y'all go ahead. I'll stay here and re-cooperate. Is anybody left here? Don't ask me. I didn't notice anybody. Now, listen here, Lieutenant. Quiet, quiet. Speak your piece, Frankie. Well, I just checked with station WRW in Cheyenne. And I think I've got the lowdown on who killed Tex Barton and Rita Wilson. What, uh, what did you find out? Well, the way I've got it figured, you see, Rita was Tex's wife. And, well, she ran out on him for some big radio executive. What? And just who is this big executive? Well, I, I don't know yet. It was just coming over the teletype when somebody tore the tape. But I've got a new line on it. Now, as I see it... All right, get him up, everybody. First man that moves follows the same route the Tex took. Nice work, Frankie. I killed Rita, sure. I found out she was throwing me over for someone else. What about the cowboy? He was the only one that knew about Rita and me. I had to get rid of him, too. All right. I'm in this thing pretty deep. So don't try anything. One or two more won't make any difference to me now. Oh, Mr. Frankie! Good work, sir. Give me that shot. Good. Oh, I thought you'd get away with it, huh? Take him down, Delaney. It's a pleasure. Come on, you. Presenting the Perladent Hour. The broadcast. Where's Ann? Now, where do you think? Presenting for the first time on the air, the girl who is destined to become radio's new singing sensation, Ann Mason. How do you like that? Practically sitting right in my lap and I didn't know it. Sure, you didn't think I'd leave her running around so you could throw her back in jail again, did you? Conga. Now you can learn to do the conga. That Latin rhythm everyone seems to know. No matter where you may go, they do the conga. Rhythm. You join the chain and follow with them. She's my discovery, you know. You move your feet, you'll find that you're in the beat, doing the conga. Then with the chain, you remain until they form the archway. And with your favorite partner, you crawl through the archway. Then sway, conga. You may be lucky with the conga. Well, love may come to you and strange. Well, Mr. Quigley? You'll find the one. She's in, Frankie. Oh, swell. Thanks a lot. Conga. Conga. You'll find that it's great to do the conga. Well, what do you think of our new find, Morty? For the last time, my name's Marty. Shake. Shake, Lieutenant. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Frankie. <laughs> you know, I suspected Martin as soon as you started talking. Guilt written all over his face. But tell me, how did you figure it was him? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't. He had me fooled, too. I thought it was Mr. Hasty. What? I'm you're yeah, 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 I've been seeing you. Me, too. Hey, Jeff, wait for me. Thank you. 